Hey kids, what time is it? Adventure time. That's right. Do you know where we're going? No. That's right. Part of the itinerary is those two places. Uh, we're we're going to Moab primarily, so this is uh, eastern Utah. Uh, but first, we're going to be starting closer by in uh, Diamond Fork Road, uh, which is uh, close by Spanish Fork, Utah. Uh, and then we will continue on to Moab, and we'll be doing lots of things in Canyonlands and Arches National Park. We are going to be driving for 57 minutes more, and we're going about 45 miles to get to our Diamond Fork Road camping destination. This trip took place in October, and the fall colors were beautiful to varying degrees in various places throughout the trip. Diamond Fork Road has some pretty narrow sections with lots of winding through the mountains, and it's a popular recreation area since it's near a large population center. We discovered while we were there that this weekend was especially crowded due to fall colors and the fall break for the schools in our area, including college students. Since the trailer is so wide, there is no shoulder on this road and I had to be extra careful driving up to our campsite, especially where there were lots of cars parked along the side of the road with people walking on the side of the road to get to their trailhead. Farther up the road is all of the dispersed camping, so there's no reservations and you have to just go with the luck of finding an available spot, as is how boondocking works. As we drove, we passed many RVs or tents already occupying camping spots, but luckily we found one that was actually quite nice and we only had one far away neighbor. We had some friends join us and they were able to spread out in this camping area we found, so that was nice to have some extra room. As soon as we arrived, we got the trailer leveled side to side as we always do, then we installed the X chocks, which worked very well for holding the trailer nice and still. Then we got everything else set up like the front and back leveling, stabilizers, and finally the slide out. We are at 72% on the battery and right now it is 9.39 p.m. Right now outside it is uh, almost 69 degrees. That's in the house. In here it's 69 degrees and outside it's 40, almost 41 degrees. We'll be turning on the mini split at some point, I'm sure, to heat it up in the trailer. But for now we're just going to let the trailer cool down naturally and then we'll turn on the mini split when we want to. Are you excited, Clara? Uh-huh. Yeah. Alright. We're going to have a fun hike tomorrow, huh? Are you excited? We're going to go to some hot springs. I'll put it on the screen here, the map, to where we're going. So tonight was just hanging out, eating dinner, and um, tomorrow we'll do the activity for this area. If you look closely at the top of the mountain peak in the center of this time lapse, you'll see cows moving around as they graze. As you can see, we got here just a little bit past the prime fall colors, so some of the trees are already bare, and the colors that were there were quite dark by now. The backdrop is still quite beautiful though, and the colors of the sunset were still visible despite there being a mountain partially in the way. As darkness descended, it got cold, so I turned on the mini split which kept us warm all night. This is the Victron monitoring portal that shows the trailer's electrical system for all of that first day. So at the beginning of that day, of course, we weren't on the trip yet, and I was letting the uh, batteries charge up, knowing we were going to go on this trip. And it looks like there was a little bit of power consumption here. I don't remember exactly what that was. It might have been I turned on the water heater or something like that. Uh, and then you can see the battery peaked at 95%. Uh, and we got to our campsite that evening, and then we started to cook dinner, and we turned on the mini split, and that's most of the standby, or, or most of this energy going into the evening is the mini split consuming energy. It's generally pulling about, as you can see here, about 300 watts uh, continuously as it was maintaining that uh, 70 degree temperature. Uh, down here you can see the consumption for that day was 3.2 kilowatt hours and the solar production was 9.2 kilowatt hours. So that solar production is definitely all that it could have produced that day because the battery never filled up, although it got close at 95%. The consumption though, this is in not indicative of a normal camping day clearly because we didn't start camping until the evening. And I showed these graphs just so that you have an idea of a little bit more of the nuance and details of what's going into the electrical system from the solar versus what we are consuming while we're living in the trailer. So you can see what it looks like when you have a fully electric trailer being powered by the sun and the dynamics of that. I will continue to show graphs like this every day of this trip as we proceed through the video series. Hey Lucy, how did you sleep last night? Good. Hey James, how did you sleep last night? Not so good. <laughs> hey Lydia, how did you sleep last night? Good and I felt like the night was only one second. <laughs> Clara, how did you sleep last night? <coughs> Mom, how did you sleep last night? Mediocre. Yeah. 
James was a little problematic. Right now it is uh, 7.38 in the morning. Inside it is 72 degrees and outside it is 27 degrees. And then looking over here at the trailer's battery system, or electrical system, we're down to 30% on the battery. And we're just barely starting to get a little bit of solar right now. The mini split is warming up a little bit, so it's pulling 600 watts. Uh, we had it set to 70 degrees pretty much all night, starting at around 9.30 p.m. The sun has come up over the ridge, and we are now getting direct sunlight onto the panels. And now the panels are getting 700 watts, and the battery is charging at 300 watts right now, and it got down to 20%. And right now it's 9.20 a.m. Everyone is outside playing and looking at the temperatures. We're 78 inside and 52 outside. I just turned off the mini split, so that is no longer pulling anything. And now our battery is at 25%, charging at 822 watts, and the solar is now producing 1,100 watts. And the electrical on board of things charging and running off the AC is 162 watts at the moment and it is 10, 19 a.m. After the girls had the morning to explore our campsite, we changed into swimsuits and packed up our hiking backpacks with water and snacks. We left the trailer there and drove the truck back down the road to the Fifth Water Hot Springs Trailhead. This is a 4.6 mile hike round trip to some natural hot spring pools in the mountains. This is a popular hike and we perhaps should have left the trailer earlier in the morning to get a better parking spot because I ended up dropping off Jessica and the kids at the trailhead and the closest spot I could find to park the truck was half a mile down the road. So that ended up making the hike 5.6 miles round trip for me. This is where I ended up having to park and I'm quite a ways away from the trailhead so I gotta get to where I dropped off Jessica and the kids. This is the parking lot. It's kind of hard to see from here, but it is completely full and there's a ton of people parking illegally up the driveway this way. Look at this beautiful trail with overarching trees. That is gorgeous. What do you think, girls? I like it. Yeah. Claire, what do you think of the hike? Oh, I like it. Yeah. I'm scared of James, oh, what do you think of the hike? <laughs> we are now hiking down the trail to go to the Fifth Water Hot Springs, also known as the Spanish Fork Hot Springs. Since we're here in mid-October, the fall colors are just spectacular, and for that reason it's really crowded. The parking lot is completely full and people are parked down the road for quite a ways. So yeah, I guess that's the price you pay when you come at a popular time of year, when it's beautiful fall colors and the weather is not crazy hot. This is a about 2.3 mile hike, one way to get to the hot springs. Are you ready, Lucy? Yeah. That's all right. I'm bold enough. Are you ready, Lydia? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are you nervous, Lydia? No. Okay, good. I'm just scared a little bit. Now I might <laughs> fall off the other side. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's beautiful. I don't know, look at these pretty, it's like we're walking into, Lucy, you should call this part the fire force. <laughs> I'm proud of my girls for doing a great job hiking these 2.3 miles and never asking to be carried. I have certainly carried all of them before, just like James is here, but we've hiked enough through the years and built up their hiking expectations to be able to handle a couple mile hike like this with minimal complaining much of the time. Upon arriving at the heated pools, I was surprised at how different the layout is now compared to when I was here last, which was likely around 10 years ago. There is clearly a lot of human intervention here where people have stacked rocks and even used cement to create a cascading water effect through multiple pools with varying degrees of hot water. As I knew it would be due to the parking situation, it was quite crowded, but we managed to find a little space eventually. So what do you think of the water, girls? I like your tongue. You like what? it? Let me see your tongue. Oh, oh it's green. <laughs> it's so hot, so hot. It's a good temperature, huh? Mm -hmm. It's not too cold. That's for sure. You having fun? This is James's first time in a hot spring pool. Lucy, how warm is the water? Really warm. How about you, Lydia? Do you think it's really warm? Yeah. Hot. Oh, even hot. How about you, Clara? So hot. Yeah. It's good though, huh? Yeah. It's a little bit windy. The air is a little bit cool, huh? 
My dad take a picture. Was it worth the hike? Good. Was that a fun hike, Lydia? Or was it a little too long? It was beautiful. I mean, look at these fall colors. It's gorgeous. We then began the 2.8 mile trek back to the truck. Hey Lydia, what was your favorite part about the hot springs? Snacks. The snacks? We can eat snacks anywhere. <laughs> what was your favorite part about the hot springs? <laughs> All right. Lucy, what was your favorite part about the hot springs? The hot springs! Which pool? Oh. Yeah, there are a lot of leaves falling. The hot springs are so cool and very hot. What was your favorite part about the hot springs? Being hot. Being hot. <laughs> All right. Claire was telling me that she was so glad that she made it to the hot springs and that she didn't stop on the hike when her legs were tired. Yes, she I am was glad. Really glad she made it. <laughs> it was the most fun. Yeah. And look at these fall colors. So beautiful. I think everyone had lots of fun at the hot springs. We were there for, I don't really know, I wasn't keeping track. About an hour, really? I thought we were there for longer. And we all had a lot of fun. And the hot springs are really cool and they're variants of pools and um, waterfalls and the temperature of the water in various pools is different. And the hike here is just gorgeous. We're now hiking back to the truck and then we'll obviously continue on our way back to our trailer. This is about a two and a half mile hike. So it might be a little bit long for some small kids that don't have much hiking experience. Uh, but we were able to do it just fine. You know, it took about an hour and a half for us to come up. And I think it'll probably take us about an hour to get down at this rate that we're going, which is all downhill, which is nice. Hey James, did you have fun? <laughs> yeah, he had tons of fun based on his facial expressions. Oh yeah. So beautiful. I'm so cold. <laughs> All right, we are back to the trailer. And as you can see, we are still getting sun here, but not for long. Coming into the trailer, we wanted to cook dinner while we were away. So we have the crock pot going here on the stove while we were away and it was on low. You can see the battery here got to 79% so far and we're getting 367 watts currently. So we're not gonna get it, be getting the charge on the battery up probably much more than this. Um, I also had the water heater on the whole time we were away because we're gonna shower now. Um, so we're not going to get the battery full tonight, but it's okay. Uh, we'll have plenty for tomorrow. We're probably not going to turn on the mini split very much tonight. Oh, and right now it is 5.07 p.m. So we were gone for about five hours. It's just a little while later now at 5.12 p.m. And you can see the solar has already dropped to 116 because we just fell into the shade from the side of the mountain. It is now 9 o'clock at night. And you can see the battery is at 64%. And I'm gonna leave off the mini split as long as I can. It is 70 degrees inside and 42 degrees outside. This is the Victron monitoring portal for the trailer's electrical system for that day. We begin the day here at 60% and then the battery declined throughout the night as the mini split was pulling energy, uh, heating the trailer. And then here it bottoms out at 20%. And that's around when the solar started to ramp up as well. And so that's where this blue line starts going back up, which is the state of charge of the battery. And you can see some spikes in energy consumption here in the morning when we're there in the trailer doing things. Um, the hot water heater tends to take the most energy and that's this spike right here as well. When we got back to the trailer after the hot springs, you can see the battery was at 79%. And then um, the hot water heater was being used a lot as we were taking showers after the hot springs. This afternoon along here, the crock pot was running and that's it. So that's this 0 0.27, 0 0.25 kilowatt hours being pulled per hour is just the crock pot running. 
And then we go into the evening here and just a little bit of uh, electricity being consumed from random electronics probably, but I don't think I had the mini split on any time during this period here. And we ended the day at 58% on the battery. So our consumption for the whole day ended up being 8.3 kilowatt hours and the solar production was 10.4 kilowatt hours. So now the morning and it's uh, 73 degrees inside and 30, almost 39 degrees outside. Looking at the electrical system, we're down to 40% on the battery. Uh, it was about, I think, 49% in the middle of the night and the inside temperature had gotten to 61. So I turned on the mini split and so it has been cycling on and off maintaining the temperature. And right now it is 8.05 a.m. Because of the canyon that we're in, it's going to be a little while before the sun gets down to us. This right here is facing north, and that is the first mountain peak that is getting some sun exposure. This view is looking east, so this will be where the sun comes from when it does, but it's going to be a while. Lydia, how did you sleep? Good. You're right. It is now 9.12 in the morning, and the battery's down to 37%. Uh, and it's just barely discharging still. Our solar has jumped up to 600 watts. And looking outside, you can see that we are now getting direct sun. And looking here at the ground, you can see it just barely has gotten to our trailer. So we are now getting as much power as we can get from the sun at this angle. Uh, but we're actually going to be leaving real soon and getting on the road to head to our next camping destination. The mini split heater is still on and this is how quiet it is. This camping spot has been really nice. It's, it's a pretty large open area and you can see the Starlink dish is right there on the side of the trailer and it worked great even though it's that close because it's pointing north. And uh, this area is just really beautiful with the fall colors right now especially and the road here is asphalt, uh, it's paved, it used to be gravel. And so that makes it uh, extra nice getting here. And uh, there's another rig right over there. And then yeah, last night, another car, passenger car arrived and they are over in that spot off to the side. And this could actually fit many more rigs, but potentially they would be you know, in each other's business too much and people like to spread out when they're boondock camping especially. So we quite like this place. We'll be back again, I'm sure. In the next episode of our trip, we pack up our trailer and drive 256 miles south through Moab, Utah, and continue south to our next boondocking campsite on Lockhart Road near the Needles entrance on the southern end of Canyonlands National Park, which is one of my all-time favorite campsites. This drive takes us about five hours, and we stop twice along the way to dump the trailer tanks and acquire new fresh water, as well as gas up the truck. Make sure to subscribe and change the notification bell to all to make sure that you're notified when that next video publishes. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.